folks, Joseph A. Sabari here. We're already in the month of October, just a few weeks before Halloween starts. I'm about to review a horror classic that would soon become a franchise, and it came out on November 9th, 1988. Yes, I'm talking about the film Child's Play, a movie about a serial killer who's also a strangler, yeah, because he's known as the Lakeshore Strangler, who's also using his voodoo techniques and wants up being possessed by a good guy Dow. And he names himself Chucky, one of the most terrifying dolls on the planet. And you want to believe it for yourself. And this is, of course, the the 20th anniversary edition, which this DVD, of course, came out in 2008, just a year before its Blu-ray release, and has an awesome slip cover that's embossed, which uh, has a frightening picture of Chucky right there. It even has the the hologram sticker that says "We Dared to Watch," and it actually moves like this. <laughs> yeah. This one, of course, has all the special features that was never released on their previous DVD, which only had the making of, yeah, which was a vintage featurette, and it has the trailer included. And the, the transfer on the previous release was just uh, an open matted full frame. Well, this one, however, is in widescreen for the very first time, the way it was meant to be seen. And has tons of extras right there on the back, yeah, as you can provide right there. <laughs> so you get it all on one entire DVD, and it's definitely worth it too. Yep, same as before, but you just get more information on the sides. So yeah, and then of course <laughs> the DVD. Which just shows uh, the shot of the toy knife. Yeah. That came from the good guy's uh, <laughs> toys collection. Yeah, this was the movie that I had a chance to see on home video. Because I never had a chance to see this movie in theaters. It's sad to say, because I wish I did. Also, the movie became a box office hit already ranking at number one at the time during its weekend you know out of its nine million budget since this movie was in production and not to mention um, there was a commentary that was done by writer and director Tom Holland himself which sad to say was not included on the 20th anniversary edition DVD that I have which is a disappointment because I would have loved to hear Tom Holland commentary on there and it would have been interesting to hear exactly what it was. Which unfortunately I do get to hear that online on the website called icontoflight.com. So that means you get to listen to his commentary that was recorded at the time when the DVD finally got released. So you can actually find it uh, on their website. Go to icontoflight.com slash child's play and then slash child's play Holland commentary uh, mp3 and there there you have it but of course seeing that I was only three years old at the time yeah I, I would probably be scared to death as a child but frankly it is scary though but I actually enjoyed it when I first saw it so there you have it because Child's Play became one of my favorite films. And that alone would later become a franchise which started with Child's Play 2. And that was, of course, the first movie that was already being sold to Universal Pictures. After, you know, United Artists who actually had worked on Child's Play 2, yeah, they were in production for um, 1990, they were already being sold to another company. Yeah, while well, still being owned by MGM. And that's probably why, you know, they had to switch it to another studio to pick up the rights to the sequels. So they went ahead with Universal because that way the series can keep on continuing. 
And while some of them didn't turn out as good as the first movie, which I know it didn't, it still holds up as one of the best movies of all time. Because this is the film that became as frightening and scary as it's ever been. I mean, the rest of them were just basically comedies, you know? That's how it's turning out to be. But, hey, it works. But a lot of films were coming up at the time when, back in the 80s, you know, we were getting a lot of horror movie icons, such as uh, Jason Voorhees and Freddy Krueger, you know? So, why not have a horror movie icon like Chucky? So, there you have it. So anyway, the movie stars Catherine Hicks, you know, who later went on to do the TV series Seven Heaven on the WB at the time. She was also in other films too, including um, Peggy Sue Got Married you know, with Catherine Turner. Chris Sarandon, who has of course been best known as the neighbor next door who might turn out to be a vampire in Fright Night, the original by the way. Not the remake. Alex Vincent, who was very good as uh, Andy Barquet. Yeah. Definitely uh, provided some great acting. You know, who was at the time very young. Uh, Brad Dorff, who was not only the, the star of the film because he he played the, the Lakeshore Strangler uh, during the beginning of the film, but he also winds up providing the voice of Chucky. You know, after he got possessed by the Dow. This Dinah Mandolf, Tommy Swinlow, Jack Colvin, Raymond Oliver, Alan Wilder, Aaron Osborne, and Juan Ramirez. It's produced by David Kirshner, who happens to be the producer of American Tale. It's also written by Tom Messini, who wound up later, you know, writing the screenplay of all the Chucky series. And, yep, he would later direct uh, two of the films, uh, Seed of Chucky and Curse of Chucky. And, along with John Lafia, who later went on to direct the second movie. And, of course, it's also co-written and directed by Tom Holland who gave us movies like, you know, Psycho 2, The Beast Within, as well as, you, you guessed it, Fright Night. He also did direct the movie Fatal Beauty, which was basically an action comedy uh, detective film with Ruby Goldberg. I know Brad Dorff was in that film too. Yeah, along with Sam Elliott. The movie begins set in Chicago, Illinois. A serial killer known as the Lakeshore Strangler, who's also into voodoo, named Charles Lee Ray, who's played by Brad Dorif, who is already on the run by the Chicago police after escaping custody, where suddenly Detective Mike Norris, who's played by Chris Sarandon, had actually shot him twice and wants up inside the toy store where he then transforms his body, using his voodoo ritual, into a good guy doll, which then causes the store to explode due to a huge bolt of lightning. Then Detective Nords finds Charles' body next to the doll, only to find out that he actually killed him. So then now, already named Chucky, the killer doll has already been purchased by an alleyway hobo, already by a single widower mother named Karen Bouquet, who's played by Catherine Hicks, as a birthday gift for his six-year-old son Andy, who's played by Alex Vincent. While Karen's co-worker Maggie Peterson wants up babysitting Andy that night due to the fact that, you know, Karen decided to work overnight and she's played by Dinah Mandoff. They, they want to appear in a news story about Eddie Caputo as an associated of Charles Lee Ray's uh, partner who has abandoned him the night he was shot. Maggie is later being killed and is hit in the head with a hammer, though she winds up 
going back and through the window, falling into still several stories and all the way to her death. Yet she landed onto the truck. And Detective Norris arrives at the scene of the crime, suspecting that Annie might be the murderer. Of course, Annie had told um, Karen the real truth that that Chucky was the one who actually knocked uh, her friend out the window. And of course, you know, they couldn't believe his story. Yeah, just like any other film these days and TV shows where no one believes in your actual story. Because then you want to be suspected that you're, you're the real uh, victim behind all of this. Yeah, I know. It, it happens a lot. And Karen furiously tells him, along with the police, to, to leave. So then Andy skips school the next morning, apparently by uh, Chucky's orders, because unfortunately... He begins to find out his secrets. So he winds up traveling to Chucky's all the way downtown Chicago. And once there he finds Eddie inside an abandoned home as his hideout. Where then, after he was asleep, Chucky actually turns on the gas stove. Already blows out, out the pilot light. Eddie's awakened and searched the house, causing it to the whole entire place to explode. You know, once he fires his revolver. And he's again is being suspected of the murder as he's placed into a mental hospital overseen by Dr. Art Moore, who's played by Jack Colvin. That night, Karen discovers that Annie was telling the truth all along, that once she took a look at the box, the good guy dealt box, and suddenly the batteries had, had shown up, only to find out that Chucky himself doesn't have any batteries. Not at all. So all this time, Chucky was alive. So then Karen decided to try to actually t ask Chucky to talk, but then she tries matters of her own hands by threatening him to, to send him inside the, the fireplace. And that's when he finally transforms into, as we know it, you know, Charles Lee Ray, as of course Chucky, you know, and he started cursing at her and just ready to attack her and, and actually bit at her arm brutally. Yep. Then she was already going after him, which um, unfortunately he escaped by going inside the, the elevator and out of the apartment. So she's already, you know, going after Chucky until suddenly. Yeah, because she's already taken a taxi until he finally uh, bumped into Detective Norris to find out what's happening. So then, uh, only to find out the, the real truth behind it. But of course, you know, Detective Norris um, did, didn't believe her and her story and anything else. Yeah. So then, of course, you know, she wants up... Um, going out of the streets, you know, trying to look for the hobo who, who gave her the Dow until Norris finally showed up. And then um, she already had to take um, Karen home, which, of course, you know, you know, Karen refused to because, you know, already Annie's in life in stake because pretty soon Chucky might go after him. Yep, so, of course, Norris once again forced her out of there. She want, he wants to drive her around until suddenly Chucky arrives and was ready to strangle him. Which then, you know, he had to drive all the way trying to stop Chucky by using the cigarette lighter, put him on his face. Yeah, while, you know, Chucky is just using his, uh, his knife and started stabbing him, you know, almost uh, close already close towards him, yeah. Started stabbing him between the seats and all the way in the back and then while well, he was still driving around and then he hits all, all the uh, the barrels of fire and all the way around and then he crashes into it and then and already flips over until you know, he was hanging upside down. Well, you know, Chucky is just going around, you know, attacking him. He puts in the knife on the 
on the side of the car and, and then Norris took out the gun and was ready to shoot him and he only shot him almost right near the chest on the all walls of the good guy uh, Dell. So then all of a sudden Chucky goes to Dr. John who was played by Raymond Oliver who's a witch doctor and Chelsea Ray's former voodoo teacher as well when he asks why he bled after he's being injured, Dr. John reveals to Chucky that, that the longer his soul remains trapped within the Dell, the more human he becomes. So in order to escape the Dell's body, Chucky must possess the first person who is told for, from his possession, which turned out to be, yep, you guessed it, Andy. Which already Andy's at the mental hospital already feeling frightening because Chucky's about to arrive and planning to kill him. But of course, you know, Chucky steals the key to Andy's cell, but only discovered that Andy has escaped. So Dr. Ardmore finds Andy and successfully tries to sedate him. But then Chucky violently executed Dr. Ardmore. And here's an interesting story about that scene because I just watched the, the special features, which includes the Chucky's thoughts, and hard to believe, I actually heard a commentary between Chucky and the writer Don Messini saying that originally they were going to use the dentist scene for that alone. So instead of um, the doctor at more fundamental hospital, we get, you know, Andy going to a dentist where suddenly Chucky arrives and actually kills the dentist by using the <laughs> all the drills. Yeah, and <laughs> no, that would have been entertaining actually, but unfortunately they said that they might be able to use that scene in the remake. If they ever do the remake, which I don't know if that remake is going to be any good or not, because, I mean, like I said, you just can't remake... Um, a classic like uh, Charles play but you know that's just the way Hollywood is nowadays you know with remakes because they're not going to be as good as the original anyway yeah no sir well anyway Chucky wants up following Andy all the way home already being knocked unconscious with a wooden baseball bat and as Chucky was beginning to possess him suddenly Karen and Detective Norris have finally arrived just to stop him and save Andy but of course Chucky wants up slashing Norris and then goes after Karen and Andy yeah and not only that though but they also went on to put um, Chucky inside the fireplace and this is where we get that classic line that Andy had ever said in a film like this but by the time Chucky was inside the fireplace and they were ready to use the matches just to start the fire. This is where, after you know, Chucky says, Hey Andy, you can't kill me. We're friends to the end, remember? And he says, This is the end, friend! So he puts in the match, and then he's, he's finally on fire. <laughs> so he's already burning into a crisp, as we know it. Karen decided to shoot Chucky by severing his arm, his leg, and his head. So then Jack Santos, who happens to be Mike's partner, you know, who arrived at the apartment in disbelieving the trio's story. Yeah, I guess that's what they're going for. Chucky's body has then burst into a ventilation duct and tries to strangle Jack. Karen, remembering Dr. John's last words, by telling Mike to aim and shoot at, at Chucky's heart. And he did. So then after that they went up they wound up going to the hospital where Kevin turns off the bedroom lights and Annie looking back at Chucky before closing the door and then the movie fades. And what could I say? This is once again a terrifying horror film that would always be remembered. And it's definitely well made well done you know never get tired some it's just like I said it's a classic you can't go wrong with that I mean I, I love 
the writing and direction that Tom Holland had provided us to have, you know, a movie about a scary living Tao who actually rise from the magic of voodoo. So that's exactly what they were going to go for. Because let's face it, you know, even during the 80s, though, we were getting a lot of Tao's, most of which were scary. I mean, just like, but even before the 80s, I mean, there were a lot of frightening Tao's exactly like Chucky. And that's, yes, there was actually one of those, uh, those puppets and those other kinds of dolls that had like some weird facial expressions that you'll never forget. And that's pretty much the ones that could be scary, especially during that night. You know, I mean, who would have thought people would be this terrifying from a doll like, like Chucky? I, I sure would. I mean, and also, just to keep this in mind, from what I heard, um, you know, finding out some information on, on the film was that Chucky was supposed to be an inspiration on the, the Cabbage Patch dolls, as what Tom Mancini was uh, talking about in his interviews or so, you know, when he wrote the screenplay. It turns out that Tom Holland, you know, the writer and director of the film, claims that he got the inspiration from a My Buddy doll. Yeah, a doll that actually came out in 1985 by Hasbro. And you know what? I guess I can see his point, too. Because he also claimed that uh, he also got a, a Raggedy Ann doll, you know, by using overalls and, and all the other stuff to the shirts, everything. And they decided to create the Chucky by using you know, an actual doll, you know, putting all the freckles, uh, the red hair, the, the blue eyes, everything. But of course, even though they did create it by using an actual toy doll, I mean, all created by scratch, they also use mechanics. And they even use a, a stunt double for uh, Chucky, too, by using a, a, a little person to play in the role so that way it can match the the Dow itself and I thought that was interesting because I, I watched the behind the scenes and and they show how they created the Chucky by using the 17 or 18 yeah at this rate I think it is 18 of all the facial expressions that they made to make Chucky look from from good to terrifyingly evil and that's what they did <laughs> yeah just to make it more human than ever before I mean the way they transform into the Tao yeah so this is way before CGI had even occurred to because nowadays with CGI they could definitely t turn a Chucky into using all these different movements so yes so they were still using the uh, mechanicals at the time and the animatronics too to create uh, Chucky and it was done very well too it was actually provided by uh, by Kevin Yeager you know who worked on a Nightmare on Elm Street movies and and several others yeah he's also um, actually married to um, actress Catherine Hicks hard to believe but <laughs> that's true because even though uh, David Kirshner who's the producer of the film, is also the creator of Chucky. So that's interesting that him and Kevin Yeager um, actually worked on the project. And they did a good job doing so for, for what it's worth. I mean, you would imagine seeing um, all the techniques that they had to do to create a scary living Tao. Also, they say that this was also an inspiration by the Twilight Zone episode, which involves um, a scary living Tao, happens to be a girl by the way. It was an episode called Living Tao, which um, surprisingly enough, um, voice actress June Foray wants up playing the role of, of a voice of a Tao called Taki Tina, which is sort of also an inspiration by a doll called Chatty Kathy. So that's interesting enough to actually do a, a doll like that. 
Yeah, because nowadays they they were also doing some inspirations of other films, and and then later you know they started getting other movies too that followed after Child's Play. You know, like we were getting films like Dead Silence and and Annabelle, yeah, which was a terrible movie, which actually came from The Conjuring. Yeah. But to me. Child's Play was an original film. It, it really inspired everything that all the other um, Talking Dell films became about. And that's exactly what I felt when I saw this. But, I mean, once again, he's still as creepier as I remembered it. And, and it's just, wow, a big inspiration. But anyway, um, it had a great cast, too. Uh, I love Katherine Hicks um, ever since she was in this movie, and and I thought she provided her as the mother, you know, very well, because you definitely knew exactly how she felt. You know, she was actually a nice and caring mother, you know, who takes good care of, of her son uh, Andy, and no matter what they, you know, it's like, you know, they they were like a great. Uh, family and, and that's what I like about it I mean despite the fact that you know she's a widower and the fact that she had a best friend who sadly got killed of course you know after babysitting uh, Andy also um, Chris Sarandon did a great job too uh, playing detective Mike Norris and it's hard to believe that after he played the vampire next door that he would later wind up playing the uh, detective in another Tom Holland movie so like this one and he did a great job yeah and also Alex Vincent you know as Andy definitely a good choice to play a young kid you know at heart in fact he definitely had solid acting you know he's not terrible and in, in any way like some kids actors can be he was definitely the right choice to play Andy and there's no other person to play him but Alex Vincent and he's definitely good in this movie there's no doubt about it I mean I, I know because Justin Whalen did uh, play the role as a teenager in, in Child's Play Free which unfortunately that was that's what started its you know it's downfall but then again <laughs> you never know and yeah they it also had a wonderful score you know it has that that chilling feel to it like like most of the horror movies that we get but this one actually had sort of an an orchestra in the mix that that has all these those ringing bells and all that it just it has that quiet tone feel to it because you know how chilling it was going to be for a film like this yeah and had some great cinematography it was all shot by uh, Bill Butler a great cinematographer to actually provide all these shots including all the movements that Chucky was doing you know while he was in inside the the alleyway you know trying to ready for his first kill yeah and it's just wow very chilling. And of course, who couldn't forget Brad Dorif as Charles Lee Ray and Chucky with that menacing voice of his. I mean, wow. Not to mention he's been playing creepy roles in the past and the future. I mean, let's face it, he's the right choice to play Chucky. There's no one like him. And he's still remembered by today. And the movie also had a controversy, too, uh, when it first came out. Which, surprisingly enough, they had a group of gangs. Because they're already they're doing a demonstration on the Chucky Dow. Not to mention that the sequel, Child's Play Free, was also become an inspiration of the two murders that they happened in the UK. Which took place um, in sometime in, in 1992 or in Free. Which actually they used the catchphrase uh, that's from the original film. You know. Yeah, such as, I'm Chucky, wanna play? 
exactly. But that's just how it went for it. But still, it's a great film, all done by a great team of writers, directors, you know, animatronic people, special effects, you name it. You know, they definitely deserve what they can have. And I'm glad that this movie is being remembered by lots of horror fans out there. That now Chucky is becoming, as we know, a horror movie icon. And he always will be remembered till the end. <laughs> so, yeah. And of course, once again, it's also beautifully shot um, in Chicago. Perfect location for the film. I mean, they probably would have filmed it in, in different locations too. But Chicago was the perfect choice for it. Because then you see exactly, you know, how, how other cities would be like. And it worked. So, yeah. So anyway, um, that's Child's Play. And I give that film five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.